Okay, who here feels so exceptionally gifted at the art of beating yourself up? Uh, do you feel like you just have that little voice inside your head or on your shoulder just constantly telling you you're not enough, you're not thin enough, you're not a good enough mom, beating yourself up all the time? If that's you, we hope you'll turn tune into today's class with Rachel Nielsen of the 3 and 30 podcast. She's coming on to talk to us today about how to stop being mean to yourself. Tune in for this one. Hi everyone, welcome to 8 Minute Classes. I am so honored to be teaching here today. I'm Rachel Nielsen. I'm the host of the podcast 3 in 30 Takeaways for Moms, where I always give three actionable takeaways in each 30 minute episode. And since I only have eight minutes today, I am going to jump right into it and I'm going to talk fast because I still want you to walk away with three takeaways that you can apply today, that you can start working with today to develop a more compassionate inner self voice. So I'm going to be talking about how to stop being mean to yourself. This is a topic that is so important to me that I have worked hard on developing over the last 10 years. About 10 years ago, I went to counseling for an eating disorder. And I was expecting that my counselor would work with me on food and talk to me about the ways that food was controlling me and that we would dive into all of that. We would look at like my food habits. So I was surprised when she didn't even, we didn't even address that for quite a while. We started with working on the inside, with looking at the way that I was talking about myself and treating myself. And she taught me some really actionable tools to start to rewire that negative mean voice in my head, which was actually the cause and the reason why I was turning to food for comfort or why I was trying to change myself through starvation. And this could be true for any number of coping habits that we have, regardless of whether or not you struggle with food. Um, we turn to outside things to, to comfort us when we don't find comfort within ourselves. We're not, we're not loving to ourselves, then we have to turn outside elsewhere to sometimes negative things to try to get that love and support. So that is why it is so important that we rewire and make sure that that voice in our head is a kind, compassionate one that we want to be there. So how do we do this? The first takeaway that I want to give you today is to just start by writing down some, some of your inner dialogue. Write down negative thoughts if they come to you throughout the day. This is important because it gives you awareness around what your inner voice even is. Because our inner voice has always been a part of us, sometimes we don't even know what that voice is saying. It's just background noise to us. We just think that this is how everybody talks to themselves. We don't realize how truly toxic it can be until we take it out of our heads, we put it on paper, we look at it objectively, and we ask ourselves, would I let anybody else in my life talk to me like this? Would I talk to anyone else in my life like this? Would I talk to my best friend, my sister, my daughter this way? And yet this is how I am talking to myself. Bringing that awareness helps us to want to change. So the first step is awareness. And one thing, so you can just do this by writing down a little note in your phone throughout the day when you notice that you're being hard on yourself or jot it down in a notebook. Another thing that my counselor had me do is she actually had me write a narrative, a story, where I embodied my eating disorder as a character outside of myself, as a friend of mine. And I wrote a story about our friendship, our relationship, and it was so eye-opening for me to see that that was a toxic friend. Um, and if you want to hear me read this narrative that I wrote where my eating disorder is a character in my life and I am interacting with her, you can hear that on episode 73 of my podcast, 3 and 30. I actually read it. It's super vulnerable, but I think it's pretty powerful to hear just how vicious we can be to ourselves and how we really need to start changing that dialogue within us. So that's takeaway number one. Just start writing down and gaining awareness around what your inner thoughts are. Takeaway number two is to then look at those thoughts written down on paper and rewrite them to be more compassionate and more truthful. Look at it objectively and say, is this really true? Do I really believe this about myself? Then why am I saying that to myself all day? It's not true and it's not kind. Um, but again, you can't really objectively look at your thoughts until you get them out of your head and on paper. Then you can start 
to rewire them. And the key to doing this is to actually rewrite them for a while. Before you can change them in your mind, you actually need to change them on paper first. You're practicing. You're practicing the kinds of thoughts that you want to have about yourself. So take that little list that you made, and at the end of the day, do a little journal exercise where you look at the mean thought, the negative critical thought, and you rewrite it in a way that you would talk to a friend, a sister, a daughter. If they came to you and they said, I am so disappointed with myself right now for these reasons, how would you respond and reframe it for them? It doesn't work to completely deny the thought because maybe the thought is true. And so you don't want to lie to yourself and com completely deny the thought. You just want to rewrite it in a way that's compassionate. Let me give you an example. Something that I am really frustrated about myself often is um, I don't make dinner for my family. And cooking and meal planning and all of it is a major struggle for me. And every night we end up like scrounging around and finding leftovers or eating pancakes or getting takeout. And I'm mad at myself that I don't just figure this out. So a negative thought that I might have about myself during the day is, Rachel, you are pathetic. You are a 36-year-old woman. Like, get it together and figure out how to make dinner for your family. How long are you going to let this pattern continue? You know, you are a bad mom. You never feed your kids healthy, good meals. And yeah, you're pathetic. I mean, that's so me to say that, right? So later that day, I might look at that and think, okay, it is true that I don't consistently make dinner for my family. So I'm not going to deny that, but I'm going to reframe it and rewrite it in a totally different way. Something like this, Rachel, you are working hard to be a good mom and you have a lot of responsibilities on your plate. It's okay if you're not good at everything. It's okay if you haven't mastered this skill yet, excuse me, of making dinner for your family. You can learn to, if you want to, you can work at it, you can learn, learn it, and you're going to be great at it. But if you don't want to, and if that doesn't fit with your skills and gifts, that's okay too. And you can find other solutions to make sure that your family gets fed. And then you know you can kind of brainstorm and list some of those out. So you're having a little dialogue with yourself, and you're rewriting the negative with the compassionate. And yeah, this takes a little bit of time to do this kind of inner work. It takes, it takes a true commitment to wanting to change and be kinder to yourself and maybe doing some journaling every night or once a week where you're rewriting, you're gaining awareness, you're reframing the way that you talk to yourself. So that is takeaway number two, rewrite your thoughts to be more compassionate and truthful. And then takeaway number three is a strategy that I learned from my counselor called coping statements. So you can use coping statements to help you recenter and stay calm in moments when you are tempted to spiral into despair and start being super mean to yourself. So what coping statements are, are they are these little short kind of pithy, memorable statements, mantras that you really start to rely on to get you through in the moment when you are filled with anxiety and you want to just start berating yourself and going down the rabbit hole. So some coping statements might be what's done is done or it is what it is. I did the best that I could in that moment. I am a human and humans make mistakes. Those are some of the coping statements that have helped me to recenter. Um, you can use a little bit of humor. You can say plot twist. <laughs> you know, you're going throughout your day, something goes wrong and you go plot twist. Whoop! wasn't seeing that coming. I'm going to change courses now. Um, you can use scriptural insights that you want to repeat to have be little mantras that you use. So it's things like, be still and know that I am God. Or one that my friend Darla Trendler from Spiritually Minded Women has taught me that she says to herself, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that's from Psalms. So when she starts to feel stressed or mad at herself or like the day isn't going the way that she wants it to, she repeats that scripture to herself. There are any number of coping statements that you could try. And my challenge for you is to get out a sheet of paper and write down a whole bunch that resonate with you, that you think might help you to remember to be compassionate with yourself when you're in a hard moment. And then try them. Try them on. See which ones stay with you, which ones resonate with you, which ones help you to stop the spiral before you go into despair. When you're in a hard moment or you make a mistake or you 
you're running late for an appointment and you're mad at yourself that you should have left earlier and you know better than this. Deep breath. What's done is done. I did the best that I could in that moment and I can improve in the future, but right now I am not going to spiral. This is the kind of self-talk that we can develop in ourselves. I would love to challenge all of you as you think about your New Year's resolutions this year that maybe this is the most important thing that you could do. Maybe this is the most important gift that you could give yourself is to just develop a kinder, more compassionate inner voice. And believe me, it will make everything else in your life easier. All of the other changes that you want to make, the ways that you want to grow will be easier. When you have a friend in here, when you have an ally, someone that you can trust and turn to, and not an enemy inside of your own mind and heart. So those three takeaways to learn how to stop being mean to yourself are first, write down the mean thoughts that you have throughout your day about yourself so that you can gain awareness that this is even happening. Second takeaway, rewrite those mean thoughts to be more positive, more compassionate, and more truthful. And third takeaway, use coping statements to recenter yourself when you are tempted to spiral into despair. I hope that those three takeaways are as helpful for you as they have been to me. I hope that you will be kind to yourself because you are doing a really good job. And I hope that you can develop an inner voice that will tell you that as well. Thanks again for having me here on 8-Minute Classes. It has been an honor. Rachel, thank you so much. You have such a gift for just speaking truth and doing it in such an articulate and concise way and helping us have those like aha moments. So if you love Rachel's class today, a couple things we want to share with you. Tomorrow, that's Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time we are gonna be doing a uh, live. Rachel and I are gonna be chatting about her class today. So uh, make sure you leave your comments and questions for her in um, the class below. So we're gonna be answering all your questions um, in the live. Uh, additionally, we want to make sure you guys know about Rachel's journal. Her Flex of Gold journal is such a beautiful way to capture the magic and the highs and lows of motherhood um, and we're going to be talking more about that in stories. So check that out. Thanks so much, Rachel. And thanks for everyone too, for watching today.